people are always curious as to when the lodge has started, how you found the locations, where was the first place you started fishing in the Arctic? Well, Dad was a pilot early on in the 40s and uh, he was flying out of Kenora for Barney Lamb in about 1948 in the summer and uh, the fishing dies off down there where the water gets warm, like at the woods area. And he says, well, I know where there's some fish, so he uh, loaded up four fishermen and a gullwing Stinson in, uh, and headed off to Flen Flon and then to uh, Yellowknife and went out to Great Slave, our location where Great Slave Lake Lodge is now. That's 90 miles east of Yellowknife. He knew there was fish there in the summer because he and his dad both lived in Yellowknife in 1938. His dad had a uh, pool hall and a sort of a gambling gambling uh, building going on at that time. So they went, actually went out to Slave Lake with a 1.9 motor on a canoe and they found uh, the Talthelian Narrows area at that time. So in about 1950 is when uh, he started saying, well, okay, we're going to take people up here every summer. So he started off with a beaver, or a Norseman, I guess, on floats first. Uh, four people, six people. Beaver, five people. And then a few years later, we got beach craft, so now you're hauling eight people. Then you got a couple grum and gooses, so you eight people in each airplane, so now you're hauling 16 people. And they were doing that from uh, Sioux Arrows, Ontario, which is just south of Kenora, all the way to Slave Lake. They were doing that about every uh, three to five days during the summer. And then that went on until, oh, into the, let's see, 1959, 60. And Dad says, well, we're going to go to Bear Lake. And there was an old Air Force airstrip up there at that time. So you could use DC-4s into there. And then over the years, we built our own airstrip. So then we could put 737s into Slave Lake and Bear Lake. So. And we had a DC-3 that I bought years ago. We've had it for 30 years. We actually just retired it uh, two years ago. And now we're using float planes again with uh, turbine engines on them. So we can take people all around the Arctic. So that's how it started. It was a vision he had and uh, everything just got bigger and bigger from taking care of four people at a time to now with all the places, we could actually take care of a hundred people if, if uh, if slave and bear and tree and trophy and all those places were full, that's a lot of people at one time. Mm -hmm.